The Baylor Lady Bears came into tonight's game against the Texas Longhorns with 15 consecutive wins. Now, Texas was the preseason favorite to win the Big 12, but it's been Baylor with the better record so far this year. And a top 10 showdown tonight would really show who's on top in the Big 12. Number three, Baylor hosting number eight, Texas at the Farrell Center tonight. It was a tight game early on, but here the Bears get the steal. Kadisha Cave gives it to Nia Johnson, who finds a streaking Nina Davis up the court for the lay-in. And the Bears take the lead 12 to 10. Kim Mulkey was fired up on the sidelines at that point. Then a little bit later, Nia Johnson takes this one inside, draws the contact, the foul and one. Baylor led by 13 at the half. In the second half now, Nia Johnson drives back inside. She misses, but Khadija Cave is there for the rebound put back. Bears lead by 12. Then Johnson feeds it to Cave, and she finishes with a tough lay in there. Bears now lead by 14. Then a little bit Davis showing off all of her skills with the block right there. She led all scores with 25 points as the Bears roll 75 to 58 tonight. Moving over to some high school football taking place tonight in Class 6 A, where playoff spots are still up for grabs. The Coppers Cove Bulldogs have already secured a playoff spot, but the Shoemaker Gray Wolves are still fighting for theirs. And those two teams will meet tonight at Leo Buckley Stadium. As I said, Cove is 4-1 in district. They are in the playoffs. But for Shoemaker at 3-1, a win tonight will put them in the playoffs for the second consecutive year. On Monday, I talk with former Coppers Cove legend Robert Griffin III and how he still keeps up with his old team. And you'll never guess what he has in common with current Bulldogs quarterback Manny Harris. I actually babysat Manny when he was a kid, so uh, I don't know if that ages me too much. But, uh, you know, Manny's a great kid, great player, and um, I look forward to seeing him at the college level too. But uh, like I tell him all the time, uh, he's got to focus on high school. You know, take care of what's in front of you first, and then you can move on from there. But I'm, I'm glad to, to hear that they're in second, and I know they want to be in first, but they're perennially always, always at the top of the chain. Well, that was Baylor quarterback Bryce Petty on Saturday, following the Bears' 60-14 to win over Kansas. But you wouldn't know that from that press conference, where all Petty said was he was ready for OU. And now the week has come where Petty and his team will get ready for OU. The 10th ranked Bears will head to Norman, Oklahoma on Saturday to face the number 16 Sooners in a huge Big 12 game. Baylor has never, ever won in Norman, and they haven't won a game on the road against a ranked team since 1991. For Petty and his team, this is a chance to prove that Baylor has reached the point that they want to get. A win will make it three out of four against the Sooners. And even though Petty was apologetic today for his postgame speech, he's definitely still excited. Tim, what do you think we're going to see from that latest ranking tonight? I think we might still see some angry Baylor fans. Yeah. I think TCU might still be ranked ahead mm -hmm. of them in these rankings. Despite that head-to-head -head win, of course, they won 61-58, to that, that hard-fought four quarters, as you talked about. But I think as of right now, as the committee has, as we've seen a little bit throughout these few weeks from the college football playoff committee, TCU is still ranked above them because of that only loss. Baylor's loss to West Virginia, of course, who is now unranked. TCU also has wins over Oklahoma, who will be in the top 25. Baylor does too. But TCU has that win over Kansas State. Baylor is yet to play them. So as of right now, TCU has played a little bit harder of a schedule as compared to Baylor, even though they lost to Baylor. But once Baylor finishes their schedule out, and once they finish with their last three games, who are Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, and then that last game of the season is Kansas State in Waco. That could be the deciding game. Not only would Baylor, if they beat Kansas State, not only would they have that win that TCU has, but they would become the Big 12 champions. In the eyes of the committee, what they've said you know, throughout this entire process, they're going to look at conference champions. They're going to look at head-to-head. -head. So I think you may see Baylor behind TCU even as much as to that final week. But I think in that final week, if Baylor does beat Kansas State yes. in Waco, that they'll jump ahead of them. And one big question coming up in this poll, how far will Mississippi State drop after losing to Alabama? Yeah, they were number one. Bama was five. I, I think we may see Mississippi State maybe still in that top four, which would pose a big problem for the Big 12 because yeah. Mississippi State will not play in the SEC championship game because Alabama beat them. But if Mississippi State wins out and they're already in the top four, then you might see them, even without becoming SEC champion, get into that playoff, and that might snub a Big 12 school or maybe even a Big 10 team out of it. So let's take a look at the standings of the Big 12 as of today, there you see Kansas State at 4-0 in the conference rank, number 9 in the country. Their lone loss is number 3, Auburn at home. Still left on the schedule then for though at TCU, at West Virginia as well, and of course at Baylor in the last game of the season. In second place, West Virginia Mountaineers at 4-1. They're ranked number 20. Their lone loss is to Oklahoma at home, a big loss there. They upset Baylor two weeks ago at home in a big game this weekend versus TCU, a huge game there. And then they play Kansas State on a Thursday night. In 
third place, TCU at 3-1. They're ranked number 7 in the country. Their lone loss to Baylor in a 61-58 shootout. They play at number 20, West Virginia, Saturday, and then they're home against Kansas State on November 8th. In fourth place right there, the Baylor Bears at 3-1. Now, they were upset to West Virginia, 12, upset by West Virginia 12 days ago. Their schedule still left. Kansas at Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State versus Texas Tech and then versus Kansas State at the very end of the year. Baylor controls their own destiny. It would be big for Kansas State to win out for those two to meet in the final weekend for potentially a playoff spot. In fifth, the Oklahoma State Cowboys at 3-2. and two. Their losses to West Virginia and TCU. They play Kansas State this weekend, which could knock them out of the race altogether. In sixth, the Oklahoma Sooners ranked number 18. They have losses to TCU and Kansas State. They beat West Virginia on the road, so a big win there. And then they play Baylor on November 8th. Now, to look at the rest of the Big 12, you see Tech Texas at 2-3, and three, Texas Tech 1-4, and four, and then Iowa State 0-4, and, and Kansas 0-4. Now the Bears' schedule plays out in their favor with three of their last five at home, and even after that upset loss, Baylor quarterback Bryce Petty says there's still plenty to play for moving forward. Midway High School has a history of sending football players to Division I schools, and for Midway Panthers safeties and other players, there's that pipeline to Baylor right across the street. Well, this afternoon, two Midway football players made their commitments, and one was a safety, but he chose a different path. Senior safety Khalil Houghton made his commitment to Bob Stoops and the University of Oklahoma today. Houghton was rated a four-star safety by scout and rivals and had offers from other schools such as Baylor, Texas Tech, and Arkansas. Being one of the most highly touted recruits in the country, Houghton had a lot of eyes on him this season. And now he can take the weight off of his shoulders as he's happy with his commitment. Or let's bring in sports director Tim O'Donnell. Tim, the game will still kick off as planned. Yeah, early in the day we heard reports that Big 12 officials were meeting. They had a conference call at about 4 o'clock to discuss changing that time from 6.30 maybe to later or maybe even Sunday. But it still will go on as planned at 6.30 tomorrow night. Let's take a look at this future track that our weather team assembled for us. The storms you're going to see start rolling in right about noon just to our south and west right as tailgating will begin. So fans may get a little bit wet. Then you see at 5 o'clock this is when the severe weather and peak rain really starts coming and that's when fans are going to start piling in. They'll probably have to take shelter at 7 o'clock. It's still going there. So kickoff time of course at 6.30 and then you see at 10 o'clock it finally moves out. So you're going to see right around 6.30, 7 o'clock that there is going to be some heavy rain. Now Baylor official told me that they will wait through any delays and I think they might be expecting delays. It sounds like it. And talking to Matt and Conley and back there in the weather department, they're thinking same thing there that there's no way that thing starts at 630 with the lightning, especially that's the thing that's going to keep the game delayed. Yeah, it's more that than the rain. Yeah, for yeah. every lightning ping, it's a 30 minute delay. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, the clock will reset every lightning ping. So expect delays if you're going out tomorrow night to the stadium. But right now, this is scheduled for 630. And by lightning ping, they're talking about a lightning strike within a mile of the stadium. Yeah, exactly. Like and then that, it, so. the clock will reset every 30 minutes to, to kick off again. So it may be a long night. Safety the players and the coaches and the fans. Yeah, uh, absolutely. A big absolutely. thing in this, and, and rightfully so. Yeah. All right, thanks so much, Jim. We bring in sports director Tim O'Donnell now. Tim, the latest poll has just come out. What is it looking like for the Bears? It's not very good at this <laughs> point. A lot of shakeup in the polls this week, and it's not very good for Baylor fans, especially that went over TCU. TCU is now number three in the country behind number one Alabama and number two Oregon. Florida State, still undefeated, is at number four. Now, there is a lot to play for this weekend. Baylor's playing for a Big 12 championship against Kansas State, who's number nine in the poll. So that's another top 10 win for Baylor if they can get it. Alabama has to play Missouri in the SEC championship. Oregon, Arizona, who plays number seven, Arizona's, Arizona's number seven. And Florida State has to play Georgia Tech. So I think what this means for Baylor is that they obviously they have to win the game mm -hmm. first, first and foremost. They have to beat Kansas State. That would make them co-Big 12 champions with TCU. Then it's up to the committee to decide whether they want TCU or Baylor as their champion in that conference for the Big 12. It's up to them. The Big 12 has said they won't decide that they'll send co-champions, and it's up to the committee. With the head-to-head, -head, you would think the committee would pick Baylor over TCU, which could potentially propel Baylor into that number four spot, but they might need some help with Florida State at number four and Ohio State at number five, maybe a couple losses this weekend. But all five of the teams ahead of Baylor, TCU's game isn't tough, but mm -hmm. the other four have big games. Ohio State's missing a quarterback yep. now. They're starting all to top 15 I can games. See, my glass is half full. I can see a situation where Big 12 could maybe get oh, abs two, absolutely. two teams they, in They the could get TCU four. and Baylor, yeah. and I think that's that what fans would probably want too. Yeah. yeah, that'd be good. We'll see. Right. It's creating controversy and some buzz. Absolutely. Okay. We're going to see the polls later on in sports, so stick around for that. Okay. All right, thanks, All right, thanks Tim. Tim.